Hey there, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. So this is update two in the home studio build and we're in the new place and it's not going to be much of a build. It's going to be more of a apply some finishing touches and get the space organized. So this is the shed that uh, we inherited that's out back in the place that we moved to and it's in a really good shape. It's actually completely insulated. So there's vapor barrier and insulation and everything. The ceiling is insulated. There's an attic up there that has venting as well so one of the days it was eh, about 32 degrees out here that's probably 85 86 degrees fahrenheit and it was nice and cool in here and i think a lot of that actually was just the concrete floor because that's really the biggest thing that i need to finish is the floor so i do have some dry core tiles left over from a previous project so i'm probably going to use that and vinyl plank flooring for all of it and that will finish the floor up and then i've got to fix some of the flashing outside for the garage door to seal it because there are some noticeable pockets uh, and open spots where creatures can get into there hasn't been too many creatures in here there's no musty smell at all so there's no water damage we had a couple of days of pretty heavy rain and there was no evidence of anything leaking in here other than a couple of little small places where there is a bit of a gap in the flashing in the garage door so i think structurally everything's all good I haven't done a noise test, so that's going to be one of the next things because there are neighbors kind of on each side and I don't want to, you don't want to be that guy, right? So there's neighbors over there on the other side there. Nobody behind us, but there's uh, neighbors over there as well. So I don't want it to be too, too loud. And that might be the deciding factor if I go with acoustic drums or if I go back to electric drums, haven't decided yet. So then after the noise test, Obviously, uh, depending on what happens with that, I have a bunch of options. So I did do a little sketch using some software, put the sizes in there and just did some estimates about the stuff that I'm gonna put in this room. And that's really the most important thing. I think the, the error I made in the last studio was when you say home studio, you get kind of this picture in your head that you wanna have, you know, the 64 console mixing thing and you wanna have a nice soundproofed area for in a vocal booth and all this kind of stuff. And for me, I really just need a, I need a multi-purpose room. So I need a place to record. I need a place to do my mixing and mastering. And I also need a home office space and probably a little bit of storage space. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit clever with how I set things up. So the big problem, I think, well, it's not really a big problem, but the main problem that I think I'm gonna need to solve is where is the listening station going to be? So with just with the way this is set up with where the windows are and the garage door, um, it might be tricky to set up a place to really hear what's going on in the mix because it's not like the ideal setup is a square rectangular place with no windows and you can kind of create the right listening environment so you can hear everything that's going on. But I think one of the lessons that I learned in the old studio was it's important to learn how your room hears things and what are the parameters of your room. And what I mean by that is Anytime you're doing any mixing or mastering, obviously you need to listen on as many speakers as you possibly can. So Bluetooth speakers, computer speakers, home stereo, in your car, in your car while you're driving it. And then you start to learn based on the decisions that you're making in the mix, how does your, how do, what does it sound like in your room? Now I may end up trying some headphone plugins as well just to see if that helps, but that's really what I learned at the old studio is I learned how my room responded. So I didn't have bass traps in there. So a lot of the times when, uh, you know, my mixes, early mixes would sound kind of thin and tinny because I really wasn't getting the right representation of, you know, what the actual mix was. So there's going to be a bit of a, a process of learning how the, the, how the room actually makes me hear and interpret things because that factors into how you make decisions. But uh, like I said, I'm going to be finishing the floor first so I'll update as I'm going along there and then I'll also do an update with the noise test to hear how loud it is outside because I've got some options for solving that problem too. So if you want to see how things are going, remember to hit subscribe. You get notified when those come out. Thanks for watching.